Pastor Brian again. This is day three in your Bible study guide. If you open up, you should have read yesterday about the giants. I hope you did. Uh, now, this by no means includes every passage about the giants. There's a lot that's in here, but we're going to start with the most famous one, which is David versus Goliath. So it's in uh, 1 Samuel 17, and so I hope you took time to read that. Might have been some words there you didn't understand. Uh, let's read some of this. So it's 1 Samuel 17, 4 through 11. It says, uh, there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath. It's Goliath. Uh, he's from Gath, that's the town he's from, whose height was six cubits in a span. Six cubits in a span. We, we don't measure in cubits anymore, but a cubit in the ancient days was from the elbow to the fingertip. So it kind of varied anywhere between 18 to 21 inches. And so that would make him roughly nine and a half, ten and a half feet tall. He figured that the average American man, which is taller than the average Jewish man, uh, back then the average American man is five foot ten. Uh, I'm six foot four. <clears throat> uh, but this guy was a giant. You know, he's like twice as high, uh, ten and a half feet, uh, tw twice as big. It's like a, a you versus a baby. Um, other uh, ancients talked about uh, giants uh, during their day. There was Herodotus, uh, Didrodorus, Seleucides. Sounds like I just had a mouthful of Cheerios or something. Uh, Pliny, Pliny the Younger. Actually, they all mentioned him. Uh, and then in the United States, we had someone uh, named Robert Wadlow, the world's tallest man. He was uh, sadly he died when he was 22 years old. Um, but he was not too too short, much too much shorter than Goliath. Goliath was uh, nine and a half feet. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're talking eight eight, uh, you're quite a bit taller than Shaquille and, and those guys in the NBA. Uh, but Goliath uh, was athletic. He was agile. Uh, that's what it mentions about some of these stories from the giants in the, in the ancient days, how uh, they could outrace a horse. Uh, they could jump over the back of a horse. And um, <clears throat> uh, You want some of the NBA guys, they can run up and down the court, but only a couple times they get tired. So he, he's big, he's tall, he's fast, he's strong, he's mean. Uh, he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. Uh, it's like bulletproof vest for their day. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And we don't measure in shekels, but a shekel, it would roughly come out to 78 pounds. Probably about more than most of you weigh. <clears throat> and so, uh, as a, as a boys can't. And so, um, 78 pounds, I, it's, uh, it's heavy. You know, he's got that on. Um, let's see what else it says. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs. Um, it's a greave. It's a shield for the shin bone. Uh, basically, if you were a short guy fighting a tall guy, the best thing to do would be cut him down to size, we would say. And so they would take their sword and try to cut out his shins, and so he safeguarded himself. He put um, put armor on his legs so you couldn't do that. And so he had both armor upon his legs and a target, a brass between his shoulders. It says, <clears throat> with the word there, target, uh, it was like uh, armor that covered his throat. Uh, another thing in, in, our, in battle in those days, since most of it was swords, was uh, uh, cut your head off. And so he protects his throat to where you, you couldn't get a lucky shot and, and cut his head off and, and win in that way. Uh, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And the spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing the shield went before him. Uh, I forgot to look how much uh, that shekel would be. But a uh, weaver's beam... Um, Oh, I guess it's 17 pounds. I did look it up. 17 pounds. <clears throat> the weaver's beam. Now, we would think of your average spear. It might be something like this. You know, something I can get. You know, probably longer than this, but about that big around. Maybe a little bit bigger around for me to heft it. Uh, his was a weaver's beam, which is roughly two and a half inches. <clears throat> I mean, this is only two inches, and so it's a half inch bigger, which makes this massive. Uh, these are the same length. Keep leaning out of shot. I won't break my cabinet. But look how much bigger that's uh, from what we were used to to what he would have. Can you imagine the force of that if it hits you? I, I can tell you this is quite a bit heavier than this. And so that's what he carried on. Roughly, it's like I threw it through the floor. Uh, roughly, his armor weighed anywhere between 150 to 200 pounds, the stuff that he was carried, uh, carrying. So, so he's, a, he's a giant man doing some giant stuff. Matter of fact, his name, Goliath, means splendor. I meant to look at him, you're like, whoa, you know, he's a big, muscular, not just a tall, skinny guy. Um, <clears throat> but he was well armored, too, and protected. Uh, the picture I got here, a lot of times it seems like uh, the artists don't read the text before they do it. But uh, there he is, and he's too exposed. I think he might have some shin guards on, but he doesn't have the throat covering. Um, as you look on 
in the story of Goliath on over in uh, like verse 33. It says, And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. So uh, he was a uh, been trained in battle since he was young, because probably when he was young he was already the size of a man. <clears throat> when he got bigger than the man, so they'd been training him to fight, and yet David determines that he would fight him. Uh, David is not afraid. Uh, he goes out and he picks up uh, five stones. Uh, you, we know the story if you've read it, hopefully. Um, Saul tries to give him his armor, and he's like, I don't know the armor. He says, the only thing I know are the tools of a shepherd boy, you know, and how he's fought a bear and how he's fought a lion. Uh, let's see, so he goes out and uh, look at verse 40. Uh, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook to put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. Five stones. Why, why five stones? Uh, we find out later in the Bible that Goliath had four brothers. So it seemed like David was not only going out there to fight Goliath, but he figures, well, I'll take on his brothers too. Um, I, like I said, I didn't give you every passage about giants that are in here, but I hope it would like stir your imagination to look. Um, there were a lot of times it's kind of hidden for us. It's hard to understand. The Anakim is a tribe that's mentioned in the Bible. They were giants. The Rephaim, uh, they were a tribe of giants. Matter of fact, Goliath and, and his brothers were descendants of the of Rapha, the Rephaim, which means uh, the dead ones or the walking dead in a sense. The Zanzumim, uh, these were called uh, roving creatures that roamed around, uh, and, and they were giants that scared people. The Emim, uh, that's another tribe, they were called terrors. That, and when people saw them, they were just terrified. And the Amorites uh, had giants as well. Now we have some of the names of the other giants. Ishbishbinab, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but Ishbishbinab is the giant that David couldn't kill. Uh, David was an old man, and he's fighting him, and his uh, valiant men had to come up and protect him. Uh, and so there was a giant that David couldn't kill, if you ever have a trivia question. Rapha, uh, like I said, this is Raphaim. He's the father. Uh, most, of them, most of the time in the Bible reference him, it just calls him. Uh, they were the sons of the giant Rapha, or the, the dead ones. Uh, his name means tall, too. Saf is another one. His name means tall. Og of Bashan. Uh, he was a king. His name means long neck. That's so why he's super tall. Uh, I put in here, there's his bed. His bed was uh, there, Deuteronomy 3.11. His bed was... Uh, uh, 13 feet, uh, they're estimating long, it became a roadside attraction, like they had put it up, like we killed Og, and here's his bed, and people would come and look at it and be like, man, it's giant, uh, kind of like seeing a giant, there's a giant rocking chair near me, and a giant, a giant trust of drawers, sometimes there's a giant ball of string, roadside attraction, people come and look at it, Anak uh, is another one for the Anakim, um, means a long neck, uh, the Bible talks about the valley of the giants, um, Second Samuel, <clears throat> it talks about uh, well, you can look at 2 Samuel uh, 21. I have it mentioned over here with uh, six fingers and six toes. It mentions him having six fingers and six toes. I call him Old 24, uh, somebody that they fought with. Uh, but if you read that, if you back up to like verse 15 to the end of the chapter 22, uh, you'll see more stories about them fighting Ishbishbinab and Saf and those guys. 2 Samuel 23 talks about a lion like man. Uh, did he fight like a lion? Did he look like a lion? What's going on with there? We, we know that there's a lot of things that go on with the giants. <clears throat> they were more than just tall people. It was uh, uh, one of Satan's attempts uh, to try to uh, uh, kill God's people. If you're interested in these topics, I, I'm hoping that this kind of lights a fire and you just want to read and study. Uh, a good book uh, I'd recommend would be Big Bad Bible Giants. Uh, it's kind of Good, good illustrations, uh, but it also goes through and it lists a lot of this and gives you a lot of thoughts about the Bible giants. As you get older, I have other ones. There's the, uh, the lost race of the giants. Uh, cloud eaters is what the Native American Indians call them because that's how tall they were. Uh, the ancient giants who ruled America. We have a bunch of them in America. Uh, matter of fact, these books talk about it. These are, um, the Nephilim is another name for the giants, and there's one with the big head. Sometimes you see them. Uh, ancient giants of North America. We live in Indiana. Uh, Indiana has a lot of giant skeletons that were found in the Indian mounds. Uh, and then here's uh, the fallen giants of the old Ohio Valley. We, that's, that's us. We're the Ohio Valley. And it includes a lot of things about the giants. And so uh, you can see that the Bible piqued my interest about giants. There's a lot of things that we can search and find and see. And we can see that every word in the Bible is absolutely true. The, the world will try to say, oh, fee fi fo fum. Uh, you, you know, that's almost <laughs> in the Bible where it talks about them wanting to eat men and stuff. And, and where um, when Joshua, you know, and, 
Joshua and Laban. Yeah, Joshua and Caleb, uh, the 12 spies go into the land, promised land. They say that we're like grasshoppers in their sight. And literally they were. These guys was twice the size of them. Uh, and they were terrified. And so the giants are mentioned several times throughout the Bible. So hopefully that stirs your interest and you can um, research that. Uh, the next one we'll talk about is the Ark of the Covenant. If you want to look and read those passages, read ahead, go back and study the giants some more. Uh, but read about the Ark of the Covenant and see what you know about that. And it's kind of an important uh, piece of um, equipment that the Israelites carried around. So uh, same camp time, same camp channel tomorrow. Uh, we'll go back and uh, we'll look and see what the Bible has to say about this topic.